Welcome to Power Talks with Santosh Sir. Today we have with us a special guest, Nepal's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Sujata Koirala. Nepal is a beautiful country that attracts visitors from more than 100 countries every year. For Nepal to move ahead, we have to focus on democracy and globalization. Honorable Minister, how do you account your two recent foreign trips to Portugal and Egypt, where you attended two important conferences? I went to Portugal and uh, I joined uh, this uh, community democracy program, which is uh, for the uh, countries like Nepal, who have been very newly democratized. And for a long time, there was no democracy in Nepal, and I found it very interesting. I met a lot of people lot of uh, many um, uh, from countries like Nepal who have participated and the ministers were there and it was very fruitful. I could tell them about our peace process, about how Nepal is, uh, ha has become uh, uh, like a model for the peace and how we are going ahead uh, with the peace process and we are going to bring it to the logical end and uh, very, uh, uh, I could uh, campaign about that. I could tell people what is exactly happening in Nepal and also um, about Nepal that we had a long time conflict and we were uh, too busy right now to building our countries and our government is very new and we need stability for stabilizing the democracy and I gave my point of views and I heard from them and also there were many countries who were already practicing democracy for a long time like European countries, Americans so it was a very interesting talk. Your trip to Egypt and Portugal was right after the change in the government. But what was the feedback like from the international community? Well, they were very interested in Nepal. They wanted to know about the peace process. I told them about uh, we need your support. We need international support to, uh, for development, for the peace process to bring it, and for the stability of the country. And I got a very positive response, and everybody seems to be really interested in Nepal, what is happening in Nepal, and uh, uh, Nepal is quite uh, popular outside. I was very proud, you know. For good reasons or bad yes. reasons? For good reason, so far. Was there any doubt shown by the international community about the completion of the No, inter we met also Ban Ki-moon there, and he was also very positive and uh, is ready to help us. We are getting a lot of help from international community and also from United Nations. And uh, you know that uh, we are going to take out 4,000 combatants from the uh, cantonment and, giving, uh, and give them training. And Anmin is very active right now in giving them training uh, program and settling them down, so that which is a very problem. positive uh, progress. We are going to form a high-level committee where uh, Girija Babu is also going to be the patron of that or heading that. And Pachanda Ji is also interested too. Uh, be there and other ex-Prime Ministers and political parties will be in the committee and, uh, and the very positive thing about it is uh, recently the United Nations uh, Security Council has also recognized this high level committee and which is uh, very, so we are moving towards a positive direction for the peace process. In Portugal you met the Indian State Minister of Foreign Affairs Sashi Tharoor, and yes. in Egypt you met S.M. Krishna, the Indian ex minister. In, 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 yeah. in um, Egypt. What was the outcome of the two so important We had meetings? a very nice uh, conversation. I, uh, to Sashi um, uh, Tharoor, I told him about Nepal, what is happening. He asked me about, uh, he had many questions about Nepal's peace process and what is about uh, uh, how uh, about the relationship between two countries and all I gave him uh, I think in a very short time I could tell him a lot about Nepal and same with uh, uh, external minister of India I met him in Egypt in NAM conference and we had a very nice bilateral talk and uh, uh, I told him that very soon we are going to meet in India because we have a visit to India so the August trip is finalized. The Prime Minister yes, is Yes, it's finalized. I think uh, I will leave tentatively on the 11th of August, uh, August uh, with my Foreign Secretary and myself. And then I will come back and go again with the Prime Minister. Prime Minister is leaving on the 18th. What will be the main agenda of both your trips to Delhi? Uh, we have a lot of things because we have open border. We have a lot of, um, we get a lot of support and we have a lot of business together. 
So we want to increase our business. We want to have a bilateral relation tied up very strongly. We want to make the relationship very good and very positive. And, uh, and also our uh, to increase uh, the business tourism in Nepal. We will have, I think, uh, three days uh, meeting with them. My, my concern or my, my curiosity is that will there be talks with Delhi about the duration of this government and how long will this government last? No, I think this is uh, our problem and uh, I think uh, we will have to uh, work together, all the party. We have to stick together, we have to work together and we have to be very honest to our country, to our people, to the uh, peace process and for the stability of the country. So, and of course we need our neighbors' uh, support, international support, that is very natural, but uh, finally we have to do it ourselves. But how do you expect to move ahead without the partnership of the Maoist faction, which are in the opposition right now? No, we are asking Mao Maoists, we are telling them that they should, if they are really interested to write the constitution, because this government duty is to write to bring the peace process to the logical end and to write the constitution. So Maoist, I feel that Maoists should participate in this government. They should come and support and help the government to write the constitution instead of staying outside and creating problems. Because we have to solve the problem. If we want to develop our country, if we want to make new Nepal as we have promised Nepali people, all of us have promised then we must get together. We have to also sometimes give up our ambition and we have to write the constitution and bring the peace in the country, which is very, very important and which is our first priority, to bring the peace and write the constitution and go for the election. Then only there will be stability. So we request them, we ask them to come and join the government, but if we have a if they don't want to join the government and stay as an opposition, that is also fine. There is no problem because right now also we have a consensus. We have a all-party government. Over the last two decades, we have seen that Nepal does not have a consistent foreign policy. In your opinion, what could be the reasons behind that? The change of the government is very often, very quick. No government lasts for more than one year, two years, you know. And, uh, and just since long, it's always uh, like that. And which, and each time a new person comes, a new policy starts, or uh, so there is a because of the destabilize, you know, because of the whole situation is so bad, and so there is no stability. Because of that, sometimes it might look shaky. But our main principles are the same. We want to keep our principle is uh, to keep best relation with our both the neighbors. India and China and to um, get to take advantage of their uh, strong, position. strong position, power and their business. You know, we, we are interested to development. We want to see, the, we want to give our people, Nepali people and the country a bright future. We'll continue with our conversation after a short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Power Talks. We are in conversation with Nepal's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Sujata Kerala. Honorable Minister, Nepal's new government was formed in a very unnatural way. Both the Prime Minister and yourself lost in the sea elections. How do you justify your position as heading the government as the Foreign Minister? I can't talk about others, but in my case, uh, in my constituency, it was very difficult to go for election. Uh, you can um, say that, uh, actually you can, I can say that there was no election. All, all the booths were captured. All the uh, people, my uh, supporters, they couldn't go and vote. The whole environment, yeah, there was a lot of uh, criminal activities. All the, um, you know, this uh, underground uh, uh, activities of the, uh, what you call, I won't, I won't say terrorist, but uh, rebellions were in my constituency and it was not very easy for us to go out and campaign. I couldn't go house to house, door to door campaigning. It was not possible. Everywhere I went, I was attacked and there were three bombs blasted. And I asked Home Ministry and I asked uh, Election Commissioner to cancel my election and re 
to uh, do re polling but i didn't get any positive response and police were also inactive perhaps they were scared to come out and it was a hopeless case i can't tell you you know it was just a hopeless case i think it also came out in the newspaper even a baby was going you know small child under 12 11 10 years were going and voting and i uh, declared that uh, this has been a unfair and uh, election and this is no election so i uh, went out of the uh, campaign and i went out of my constituency and went and stayed in biratnagar i didn't even go for the counting because uh, that, that that was meaningless there was uh, so called no <clears throat> no election but we were told that we have to accept this election because it is very important you know the ca election and we have to uh, accept it so we accepted it and uh, election so it was no pre and fair election this is a strong allegation against the election commission and also the foreign observers who were here and declared yes. pre and fair elections of nepal no, because uh, in many uh, cases they couldn't go everywhere they couldn't travel everywhere they don't sometimes you know nepali tricks and conspiracy are very difficult for foreigners to understand so perhaps uh, they didn't understand the whole thing and they wanted stability as soon as possible this is what we also wanted that's why we accepted also my father you know who was himself a prime minister said that uh, uh, we have to accept this election because we have to say this uh, you know election we have to accept because there has to be stability we have to bring some how maoist into the mainstream of polit- politics and democracy and uh, parliamentary system so we accept it for the country's sake for the people's sake we uh, even today i will i will accept but since you asked me here i have to tell the truth because your question was very hard so i have to tell you the truth there were also criticisms about your father favoring you against your party's unwillingness to accept your leadership what is your say on this i don't think so because uh, i have uh, last 18 years i am in active politics i have sacrificed a lot for uh, the sake of the country and for politics and uh, so i i don't think he has favored me it is uh, the people and uh, parties majority of people who supported me and they still support me i am very confident about that how do you view the family politicians dominating politics in south asian nations including your own family in nepal i don't think this is only in south asia i think this is all over the world because uh, the situation you know brings you into politics you don't come into politics you don't jump into politics just for the sake of politics or for the glamour but it is for the sake and especially south asian politics is not a glamour it is very tough and very difficult you know so we are involved in politics because of the situation we grew up with politics we saw we were all in hard days and good days and i have seen how my father has been taken to prison he was 7 years continuously in prison and then 19 years altogether fighting for democracy fighting for the right of the people for human rights you know we have seen that we have suffered you know so that is the reason uh, which drags us into the politics to change the society to change the lifestyle of the people to give better life to them we have promised them so this is what i always feel guilty that we haven't been able to give something for our people what we have promised especially my family my father my grandfather you know everybody who are in prison i have only seen prison in my childhood you know so i i think uh, it is not a favor it is what uh, this is what everybody sees and i have also myself i have not come as uh, because i am his daughter i have come in politics because i have worked you know i have not just come i have won election of a central committee member you know i am also a member of central committee and uh, he has not ele- he has not nominated me i have been elected by the party workers and i think i have support from the party a large group of party uh, has uh, have uh, is supporting me and i am very mm, uh, confident and i am very happy about that and i am very i i uh, feel also responsible for them because they have given me so much support nepal is the only country in south asia where we haven't had a female prime minister are you aiming at becoming the first one no when i i never thought about becoming prime minister 
because my father was 18 years almost always in power and always in, as a prime minister i have seen also uh, what prime ministership is i have also seen what hard life is i have seen everything so um, uh, to be a prime minister is um, of course uh, not not only my ambition my ambition my first ambition is to bring change in the country and to bring change in our party and to bring uh, to give better life to nepali people so for that i am doing politics and i'll continue whether i become prime minister or i don't become prime minister i will continue my politics your father has held very high position in politics and leadership in nepal for almost half the century is he going to pass you that formula with which you can thrive in politics for a long time as well no i have seen you know his dedication i have seen his love for the people his sacrifice and his uh, hard life there was also time when there was very hard hard life you know he has been to prison so many times and i have seen lot of positive things about him nobody is perfect i'm sure he ha- he has also not been perfect person but i am very sure that more uh, uh, qualities he has so i i am very that has also encouraged me in going to politics and to do something you know to fulfill his uh, 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 his uh, thoughts or how, how you how you say his vision in your childhood during your school vacations you have to go to jail to meet your parents both your father and mother how was that experience like oh that experience was very not very good but as a child when you go to back to school and with your friends you forget but it's always in the back side of your mind i remember praying to god every morning you know please release my father please release my mother you know i was when i was young i was brought up by my grandmother who was a lovely person and who used to tell me a lot of stories and encourage me and, um, and that's why i was inspired to do uh, social work and she used to tell me stories of i didn't know my father because i was only 5 6 years old when he went to prison i was always a, already a grown up lady you know when he came out from the prison so i hardly had uh, communication with him i i didn't know how to handle him or he didn't know how to handle me and my mother died soon after he came out from the prison so it was a very hard tough uh, a very tough uh, childhood but anyway but uh, i think that has uh, also uh, given me a sense of uh, feelings you know to do something so i always see that also in a positive way i admire you for the plastic surgery hospital that you have established yeah. to treat people with serious burns and certain yeah. physical disabilities yeah. apparently you got encouraged after you lost your mother in yeah. your childhood yes how do you see that part of your childhood well it was very hard uh, uh, my mother she died she was burnt she was a school teacher and uh, she was uh, she got uh, burnt severe burn and she died in biratnagar and uh, my i had always uh, desire i missed her so much in my childhood How old she was a very good i was 13 and uh, she was my best friend and she was uh, uh, to lose your best friend suddenly you know was a shock for me and i always wanted to do uh, uh, this uh, social work and help people who were burnt you know so i uh, i took that advantage when democracy came and I, i was in germany so i got in touch with german doctors who were very interested in nepal and they had already a plastic surgery hospital in other countries so they opened one hospital and we worked together which is doing very well very committed doctors german doctor is there and uh, they are financing also the hospital and uh, going uh, to different the areas outside Kathmandu also we do operations and a uh, lot of people are getting treatment we'll continue with our conversation after a short break do stay with us welcome back you're watching power talks we are in conversation with nepal's foreign minister honorable sujata koirala honorable minister we have seen that with every change of government in nepal the ambassadors have changed this costs the government unnecessarily in a huge amount why do we have to change ambassador or nominate new ones untimely we should not change let's say we should be confident that we should not change the ambassadors and mostly i think uh, 
the change of the ambassadors are done because of lack of confidence, because uh, even in, because of the uh, political situation and because of the political appointees, and uh, you know that he might do something wrong for our party, he might do something wrong for the government. So they keep changing. But if there's a Kenya diplomat, they, they, he, you know, he's for everybody. He's a professional man and he's a career diplomat. So we have to see to it that we give them more chances. How long will it take you to provide more space and due respect to the career diplomats? Well, we have already started. We have already started and uh, just only in few countries we might send somebody uh, more from the political side, but mostly we want to, we will send a career diplomat. Nepal's economy is a mess. We don't see much foreign investment coming in. Will you come up with a vision or a plan? Or will your ministry come up with a vision and a plan to attract or invite more foreign investment? Or do you think that's the job of the Ministry of Finance? I think that is a job of uh, foreign ministry uh, because uh, we have to uh, see to it that the foreign, how we can attract the foreign investment. We have to attract them. And for that attraction, we have to first, we need a stability. Again, I have to come back to the same old story about stability and peace process. So this is the main issue, you know, that is the reason why I am giving priority, my ministry is giving right now priority to the peace process. I have, uh, we also try to work together with the peace ministry. We try to exchange our views and ideas and um, work together. So it, uh, it uh, goes uh, fast, it moves fast, it doesn't get stuck in the middle. So we can move fast and we are trying very hard also to communicate with international community, with the United Nations, with UNMEAN. I am constantly in touch and meetings uh, with them and also trying to encourage them to uh, how to uh, rehabilitate and uh, the people and how, how to uh, bring the peace process uh, into the logical end as soon as possible so we can drag the attention of the world. During the recent Nepal visit of Indian Minister of External Affairs, mm -hmm. SM Krishna, was economic cooperation discussed? When we are there on the 11th, I think uh, 11th I'm going to India and we will definitely talk. We will give high priority to that. In and India is also very positive, what I have heard and what I have talked to them um, on uh, giving a lot of aid, financial help to Nepal. In terms of business or just donations? In terms of business, in terms of aid and also business. And we will give, we will also uh, strongly put our views, our interest, our views. We can cooperate and work together. We can get a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits from them. We have to also give priority to that. Our government, you know, has to uh, give priority to how to drive business from India and from China. In few words, what will be one major achievement you will give to Ministry of Foreign Affairs during your leadership? I, I want to expand foreign ministry. Foreign ministry is not only traveling and making bilateral relations and then coming back and sitting on the table. I want to promote business. I want to promote uh, peace process. And I want to expand the ministry and cooperate with um, also with security and uh, because security also comes to the foreign uh, affairs because it is very, very, very important. Um, I want to have meetings with all the security forces we are already having and expand our thinking and our vision and our ideas and work together. So I want to expand these ministries and give uh, a new dimension. Let us hope that with all our efforts we are able to create stability and peace in the country. With this hope, I wish you good luck and goodbye. See you next week, the same time. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.